Hello everyone, no respawns, hope you've had a good start to the week so far. Uh, in the last video, I asked you guys whether you would be keen on me doing a sort of tutorial to actually tidy up areas in the creation kit. So it's going to be very, very introductory. If you stumbled across this video thinking of something quite advanced, this definitely won't be it. This is for those of you who are maybe a little bit intimidated by the creation kit, but will just want to be able to, say, tidy up Sanctuary, uh, tidy up Starlight Driving, which is what we're doing in this video, or that kind of thing. It's basically just quite kind of like basic stuff that will enable you to if you want, get a grips on the fundamentals of the creation kit and then, you know, kind of learn and try other things. However, if you just want to stick to this level, that's absolutely fine. As I said, um, in the last video, I used it to actually prepare one of my Fallout 76 style outposts. And it's a local mod, so it isn't actually, it's, it's basically a, a local plugin file that's not actually uploaded to the wider internet as a mod. So right, for the first things first, you're gonna obviously need a PC copy of the game, that stands to reason. Now, generally speaking, you'd probably be playing this on PC as well, because it's just way more straightforward. You literally just save the plugin and then you'll go into the game and then activate it as you would any other mod. Um, you can, if you want, still upload these to Xbox One and PS4, but yeah, I mean, generally speaking, you that would make it live for everyone. Um, or you could, for example, just save the the file to... No, it would have to be through Bethesda, wouldn't it? Because you can't get Nexus uh, for consoles, of course. But anyway, let's uh, ignore my rambling. Let's just get straight into this. So basically, you've um once you've actually... You have to always install the creation kit, and it won't specifically look like this. I've arranged my video, um, my windows, but you'll have these four windows. So object window, render window, which is where you'll see the actual game, uh, the cell view, and then this little warnings window will pop up. Now, I haven't even actually got anything loaded just yet, but it just does that. So you can see it's having a little issue with some textures. Just completely ignore it. But what you want to do, because it will texture errors will happen all the time. There's stuff you won't physically see, so don't worry about it. Just drag it to the bottom so it's out of the way. So that way you don't see it pop up and, you know, it gets annoying. So first things first, you're going to need to actually load up the master file first or the respective DLC file. So you see this little icon here. You go to where it says load master slash plugin files, select that. And these are all of the plugin files and master files. So the master files are the base game files. And then the plugin files are effectively the mods. Master files are stuff that Bethesda themselves make. And plugin files are all your various mods. As you can see, I have quite a few. A lot of these aren't even published mods. They're just kind of works in progress, which I have saved locally. So if you're wanting to just edit the vanilla game, you just need to activate Fallout 4 ESM and then just hit OK. However, if you want to edit elements of the DLC, you also have to activate the relevant DLC. So in the case of this, uh, Nuka World, pretty self-explanatory. A uh, Coast is the one you want for Far Harbor. And these are the th three. Oh, there's the robot uh, automatron as well. And then these are the three workshop packs. I believe Workshop 03 is the Vault Tech Workshop one. Though it's it's got obviously got more quests than the, uh, the Wasteland Workshop. And I believe that one must be Contraptions. Just as an FYI, if you... I believe this is the case, but I would just err on the side of caution. If I might be wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Say, for example, I decide to just activate all the DLC so I have all the items, right? But I make a, quote, vanilla game mod. I'm pretty sure if you then made that a live mod, people would still need the DLC, even if it doesn't use the items. But I'm not sure. I might be wrong. Um, but just to be utterly frank, unless you're doing something specifically in Far Harbor, or if you specifically want the elements from, say, Nuka World or Far Harbor or, you know, Wasteland Workshop, there's just, you only need Fallout 4 ESM. So you hit OK. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm not actually going to cut through any of the load times on this. That may seem quite bizarre. The reason why is I want you to see how long everything takes. I have a mid-range PC, right? So it's an i5 6, uh, 600, 6, 500, no, it's 5, 500k. I always forget. Uh, GTX 970 G GPU, and I've got about 16 gigabytes of RAM. And as you can see, I'm pretty much just got OBS, Spotify, the creation kit, and about three tabs open on Google Chrome. Now, it still takes quite a while, and it will be quite slow. Don't worry about it. You also, it does that look that you think maybe your computer's crashed. Just leave it alone. You're fine. Just don't click and go clicking around this window. 
um, my advice is just to have a second monitor if you have it and just you know, go on, I go on Twitter all the time basically when I'm ever loading between areas. Just because if you go clicking around it can make it freeze. This is the case with most people by the way, if you ever watch one of these tutorials it's usually the first thing people tell you, they just like just leave it alone. Generally it's, this part is a bit erratic in how long it takes. Sometimes it takes, it usually doesn't take too long, as you can see I'm kind of like taking a little bit longer now, but it is loading up. You'll just see it because it'll stop loading everything and the interiors will appear in a sec. So it's taking a little bit longer today, but that's okay, that's all right. I can kill time in the link pinned in the comments. For those of you who have been following me for a while know that I'm quite into my wargaming. I will finish my sentence before I go to the thing and I just finished my Necromunda gang, the Goliath gang, the reprobates, and so link in my comments, pin comment to my Instagram if you want to see that. Anyway, anyway, anywho, so we're in. Right, so sometimes the, the menus, if out of window, by the way, disappears, you just go view and you just find them here, so it's all good. Anywho, so as you can see, all of the interiors have now appeared and everything's loaded in. So you have in Salvia, so first things first, actually, before you start making the mod, it's probably a good idea to just save it. This way you know you're actually working on your plugin. Now don't worry, you're not going to overwrite the master plugin at all. You're fine. Because what it'll do is it will basically just kind of save it as a plugin. You can't save over the master file. Well, you might be able to, but I've, I've never managed, shall we say. So let's save it first. So I'm to hit save. I've actually already got started, but I haven't actually worked on it yet because I tried to do this video yesterday and has a sore throat. Uh, so I ended up having to scrap it. So basically you just name it whatever you like. In this case, no response hyphen starlight. Uh, hit save. Uh, yeah, that's good. And that'll make it the active file. You see in the top right there, it says no response hyphen starlight ESP. Now, if you ever wanna check again, it will say active file. So when I open the game, when I open the creation kit, if I'm coming back to it and obviously Whereas before I opened this section up here and went in the master file, now what you want to do is you just want to select this file here and set as active file and just hit OK. You don't have to worry about clicking the master files or any DLC dependency files because it will automatically load up the dependencies. So there we go. Right, now, I am going to basically just tidy up Starlight Drive-In. This is what I said, this is going to be a very, very simplistic video. I'm just going to try and go over how you navigate and also just kind of best practices. It's going to be quite a straightforward little thing. So firstly, the cell view window is divided into, in this instance, all of these sections. If you've got the DLC open, it will also have Far Harbor and Nuka World as well. Uh, the interiors, obviously all interiors. Then you've got recent cells, which is an incredibly useful one, which has, I think, the last 10 or 12 areas you visited. If you're like me, where you tend to, for example, I use Adam Cat's Garage as a reference point because it has lots of like flaming barrels, which I can just quickly copy over and stuff like that. Or it's also useful, you know, if you're just trying to quickly find the last place you worked. So when you load in the game for the, when the, the creation kit for the first time, you will have to navigate back to your location. So it's very, it's much quicker to go to recent cells than it is to go, you know, manually search through the Commonwealth. Also in a couple of areas, they won't be named the thing that you think they're going to be named. Most of them, for example, Starlight Drive-In EXT, Adam Cat's Garage. So that one right there, P0I Brian B01, is actually Merc Water Construction Site. And I had to actually manually scroll over it. So normally what I'm going to do is I would just select Starlight Drive-In, but I'm just going to show you the process of going through. The reason being is, again, it has a little bit of lag. So I've clicked Commonwealth. It will in a few seconds, say 10, 15 seconds, oh, even five seconds, it'll load up with all of the Commonwealth stuff and you just scroll through and you find it. It's, if you click these menus, end up, you can go a bit faster, but if you click, if you drag it down, for example, you're gonna be in the wilderness pretty quickly. Pretty much most of them are wilderness sections, as you can see, so it's probably, well, it's probably easy to go to recent cells, actually, but in this instance, I'll just show you. Bump, 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 bump. Starlight. I should have put my glasses on, but it's fine. I'm not too blind. Spectacle driver looks starlight driving EXT. So let's go. Right now, again, you're gonna have to wait. The render window will load up. You'll get that little uh, that little circle loady thing. It sometimes, again, it will sometimes take ages. It will sometimes be quite quick. We've been doing this for three and a half 
Oh, wait, no, because I paused a second ago. It was about six minutes or something. There was a police siren a second ago, so I had to stop recording to wait for it to go by. <laughs> anyway, well, that's waiting. As I said, go check out my Goliaths, yeah. Really pleased. The paint job is quite scruffy. I wanted them to look table ready, but I also didn't want to spend too long on them. Link in the description to my Instagram. Also, follow me if you like. It's mostly just beard pics and food and Games Workshop models, and it's good fun. Right, it's taken a bit. Is it loading? Oh, it is loading. There we go. If you're ever curious, just let it do its little... I'm waving my hands like you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, you always just double check. It was once you basically double click the the location, it will go to it. And again, it will take a while, so we have to wait. But again, I want you guys to see, so you appreciate. Because it's, it's... When I first did, did this, and a lot of people do do this, they think it's crashed. They just think, oh, the creation kit doesn't work on my computer. Here we go. Right, so we're now in Starlight Driving. I am going to get my keyboard. I um, sneakily have just recently bought a Death Watch Kill Team for the Kill Team skirmish game, and they were in front of me. I forgot to clear my desk. <laughs> right, so, okay. This is Starlight Drive-In, but Starlight Drive-In with loads of weird, colourful shit all over the place. If you want to know whereabouts you are, highlighted in grey at the cell view will be your current location. So if I move... It's probably going to jag. Oh, it's just switched over to Wilderness, you see? And we're back to Starlight Driving again. So that's very useful, for example, if you have a situation like me with Merkwater Construction Site, where I had to actually find it, so I ended up effectively going to, I think it was Jamaica Plain, and manually dragging myself over. It's worth noting that if you want something to appear in the recent styles, you actually have to go to it. So what I mean by that is, if for when I did Merkwater, because I navigated from Jamaica Plain. It wasn't actually my, quote, recent cell. So when I knew the location of the cell, basically, I just... Oh, it's going to lag now, sorry. Uh, when I knew the location of the cell, I then effectively just refreshed the area, which I'll show you. I won't show you because it'll take ages, but... Um, so basically, if you want to refresh the area, and so it refreshes and it is your current cell, just hit F5 as you would reload a browser window, and it will just reload the entire area in again. That's very useful if you're switching between areas, because sometimes when you go in an area, it won't instantly load everything. And honestly, it's just quicker just to refresh. Right, anyway, so let's first do navigation. So you see I'm zooming in and out. That is, as you can probably guess, the mouse scroll wheel. So scroll in, scroll out, zoom, yada, yada, yada. If you click in the mouse wheel... It does this, so it just moves it around. Effectively, it's vertically and horizontally, but at the angle you're looking at, it's, it's, you know, it's really straightforward. It's pretty much, I think, standard RTS navigation. Sorry, little Death Watch dudes on my desk. They look awesome, by the way. I'll have pictures of them soon. Now, if I want to move the camera up and down like this, I hold down Shift, and I just move the mouse up and down. I also find it. I don't know whether it's actually or whether it's just me thinking, but if I hold shift and then click in the middle mouse button, it seems to be a little bit more controlled, but I may be uh, imagining things. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is more controlled and slower if you do it with the middle mouse button, but that's pretty much it. I often just drag the cam. So basically right now I'm just moving the middle mouse button and if I want to kind of move around, you will get, you will get better at it. Now to select items, it is what is it? Oh yeah, it's, it's clicking. I was I was thinking if I had something selected. I do actually have something selected. So basically, when you haven't got anything selected, it will be a little cursor, and when you have, it'll be that little this arrow. Now you may notice it's not highlighting anything right now. It's because I'm selecting this big blue. Well, I was selecting the big blue thing right now. Really useful technique because often you'll have clouds you can't see. Weird boxes like this getting in the way. It's an absolute pain in the ass. So if you just tap one, as in the, the number one, twice, it'll hide it. And what I do is the first thing I do in an area is I grab all those annoying things and I hide them. Anything else? There's one over there. So just select it. One, two. And again. Ooh, whoop. Because you're going to find that it's... I didn't know this for ages, but in Sanctuary, for example, I had a nightmare with clouds. Um, if you want to deselect everything, again, press D. Uh, very important, because you don't want to actually start dragging stuff around. Deselect things often. Yeah, if you're not sure what you're 
if you've got your item selected, hint, it'll look like that. Just hit D. Now, you may notice as well, you can see all of these people sitting here, arrows everywhere, and just colourful stuff. That's the scripts and like, basically it's everything that's technical, like lights, uh, scripts, and monster spawn points, that kind of thing. If you want to get rid of those, you just press M, and M again. M, hides, and reveals. You can actually press it three times, because I believe it cycles through lighting as well. Speaking of lighting, so if you want, you may notice right now it's got all the shadows and all of the lighting. Obviously, it's a little bit pixelated because I'm actually, I, I'm using it through a render window. If I press the A button, it gets rid of all lighting effects and also you may notice it's a bit smoother. Very, very useful if, you, for example, your PC is just struggling with all of the shadows and everything like that. I like to have it on though just because my PC is decent enough to handle it. You can also at the top where it says time of day, you can actually adjust the time of day. It also will randomly fluctuate through the levers, um, the, the lever, the weather. So you can actually, you know, for example, I saw a bit of fog there, you know, it's all that kind of thing. So it just kind of goes through it. It's useful for, you know, if you're testing all the lights and all that jazz. And it's actually easier to see some of the lighting cones. See, lighting cones. Don't worry, get to that. I usually set it so it's the morning so I can just see what I'm doing. There we go. Right, okay, anything else? You can also do it at the top as well, and it actually tells you. So if you, whenever you're, you have to obviously, you see where I've got it, this really common stuff, but just in case you're just a little bit confused, it's in black right there, the text in black, which means I'm selecting this window. So if you just click the top bar, and you just put your cursor over everything, you can actually see what the quick keys are, which is very, very useful. Right, so pretty straightforward to delete something is... Is, is, is as simple as you think. So you quite literally just select it and hit delete. Select it and hit delete, yada, yada, yada. And that's that's kind of it. If you want to see what to double check you're del um, selecting the right thing, you can either right click and hit edit and that will come up with leaf pile 02. Or you can just double click on it. Oh. Double click on it. And it'll come up with the name. Uh, if you ever make a mistake, it's very straightforward. If you know you're simple with it's standard command. So control Z is undo, control X is cut, control C is copy, control V is paste, yada yada yada. Um something unique for the creation kit is control D is duplicate. Uh, that's just sometimes useful. I, 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 there's probably a more advanced way why doing that is better than copying. But it's, for example, I use it, say, if I'm, I've am i boarded up a wall and I don't want to have to rotate the item again. I duplicate the item and then I can just keep it. So, say, so if I were to if I copy this, say, aren't even better if I copy that, right? If I copy that. Oh, okay. It sometimes isn't. I was hoping it would be stood up, but sometimes it might reset the position. It's just, it's situational, right? Now, before I go into deleting more items, let's quickly just show you how to move things and navigate them and that, all that jazz. So basically, right like this, it's on a vertical. It's basically, it just moves on the horizontal plane around. See? Voila. If I press E, it then can go up and down. And I can still move on the horizontal plane as well. You can kind of do it like that, but it gets a bit weird. Um, the arrow that's highlighted is the one that actually moves around. Bum, 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 I've moved it around like an absolute. There we go. And if you want to rotate stuff, you press W. And again, like that. I will also show you up there. You can do it as well. You probably guess. And so on and so on. And if you want to make something bigger, it's two. So you hit two. And you can, oh, you can just select the arrow first. Hit two. You can make a giant bollard if that's your thing. And that's pretty much the basic navigation. Quick useful thing, if I hold the right mouse uh, right mouse button rotates. But you may notice that I'm selecting this item and I'm rotating around it, right? So if I want to do something like this, suddenly I'm rotating a much wider axis. I'm select you get my point? So you actually always rotate around the item you're selecting. This is incredibly useful if you're 
it's useful for navigation. So for example, if I'm editing this here, and I'm really inside, and I'm trying to navigate, so I can move that and actually navigate around the room, but I might accidentally misclick, say, on the actual building, so. And suddenly, oh, I, you know, it happens a lot in the sanctuary houses because they're quite big. So something big will have a wider axis. So if you're ever wanting to navigate around, just deselect, pick something small. It makes kind of navigating a bit easier if you get my point. Anyway, so that's actually um, a surprisingly concise, quite pleased with myself, uh, description of how to actually navigate. So what I'm going to do is very, very quickly uh, tidy this area up. So first I'm just going to get rid of some. I won't do it fully. I'll just get rid of a few of the bits. With these, they're... You might make them bigger. Oh, I've got a thing. I always keep it so it's... I press E again. Um, so it's just normally like that. Normally, if that's actually a word. It is a word. Now. Now, 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 now. Rather, because I'm not going to show you how to delete every single item. Because that's tedious. Because you can figure it out at this point. Let me how to show you how to get rid of certain things. Because you may notice... That. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Right. This is um effectively a blood stain. Or a texture. So, a uh, decal leaves, right? So this is, instead of that pile of leaves, it's it's a stain, effectively. The same way blood, right? So, and you can only get rid of these. You can't see them. Oh, someone's doing alarm right around my house. That wasn't too loud, that's fine. I won't edit that part out, it's okay, it was a small one. This will be useful for things like blood stains. Uh, you know outside of Sanctuary, you've got that dog, dead dog, and the dead dude, and the blood stain. If you press M, you can delete that blood stain. So if I want to get rid of these leaves, you just delete them like that. That's also things like, if I can find another example. There we go. So like there. Here, here, here. Like this part here. You see down here? Puddles of water. The water is a stain, right? I'm going to leave that there because I actually quite like that there, and I don't want to clean too far out so yeah the water is is a stain effectively so if you ever could kind of can't if you're ever example because to, to, predominantly you might be d navigating the area around like this because you know you find all of this shit really really annoying especially if you're somewhere which has a lot more going on like sanctuary is an absolute nightmare of just stuff everywhere because obviously there's all the quest scripts as well you might be navigating around like this and just getting really confused as to why you're what you think is a pile of leaves is it highlighting so basically it's it's actually a stain right now on the subject of status effects so you can probably guess what this is this is radiation so i'm obviously going to tidy up this area because i want this is my starlight mod i don't want you to have to delete the barrels so i'm just going to literally delete that now what i usually do because i don't want it to get the way you see where i've got i've got the water i'm actually just gonna oh actually that's something else where's the water there it is. So I've hidden the water now. Now I can actually select the barrels. I will show you how to unhide. Actually, I'll show you now. Do you want to unhide anything? If you've accidentally hidden the wrong thing, just press Alt-1. So you press 1 to hide something. Press it twice because it fades and then it hides further. Alt-1 makes everything come back again. So I just select things again. 1, 2. 1, 2. 1, 2. There we go. Yada, yada, yada. It's just, I didn't know that for ages, and it was an absolute pain in the ass. Let me just show you. Oops, see, I got the right thing. There we go. If you're never sure what you're selecting, deselect and select again, yeah? Now, one thing that will happen is this. You notice it has that little arrow pointing up, because that was linked to the radiation. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do that now, because that is not relevant to this video specifically. Though I did actually show it in one of my older videos when I was, uh, it's basically just a linked ref. So if I delete this, it'll say confirm, confirm, god damn it, confirm form user changes. So I'll just set them, it actually does tell you what it's linked to. So it's linked to radiation hazard form. It's kind of common sense, right? So a lamp will be linked to light sources, barrels to radiation, yada, yada, yada. So I'm just going to get rid of all these. Yeah, I don't care. Sick of your face. Da, da, da. Oh, the radiation's gone. Yes. 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 And so on and so on. Right, so that's how you get rid of bits like that, right? Glowy shit. I'm just going to hide it. It's annoying. Now, the big M's. Well, actually, that's actually a different M. 
That's a map marker. That's the map marker. Don't move that, yeah? Oh, incidentally, I'm going to try and play around with it because I think moving that might actually sort out the stupid caretaker bug in Jamaica Plain. Let's just hide that. So that M, which is a monster, I think. Is that a monster? I think that's the monster. Yeah, we go. Level, morale, ambush. Uh, be smart with this, basically. If you've gone to an area before and there's just some random encounter there that has no relevance to a quest, by all means delete them, right? However, obviously, for example, with these mole rats, I know that is tied in with the quest to unlock this area, so I'm not going to delete them. I don't need to delete them because I know for a fact the bodies disappear anyway, so it's fine. However, say, uh, Croup Manor would be a great example. There are loads of ghouls that spawn that when you kill, they disappear, I think. Yeah, I think they do. And I'm actually going to do that mod after this one, spoiler, um, because I'm going to do a, a creepy haunted house. I th but you can scrap the ones that don't have any quest effects effect effectively. So th that's what I usually do. So for example, in Croup Manor, I'm going to scrap all of the dead ghouls that are you know, already in the area, but I'm not actually going to scrap the ghoul spawns. I might if they don't disappear, but I believe they do. But yeah, that's kind of basically it. A um, couple of things to pay attention to is... I'm going to obviously show you how to then save the mod and, and move it around. As don't forget to remove light sources if you remove... If you just want to get rid of light. So if I get rid of a candle, I need to get rid of the the light source. It's the bulb. Obviously, if you're allowed like this, you won't see it. Hit M. It's the bulbs. What else? You don't need to worry about... You don't have to delete these scripts. It may seem quite odd. But for example, at my Far Harbor outpost I did because I modded the area. I deleted the ghouls because they had no quest effect whatsoever. However, their scripts for them kind of casually hanging around were still there, but I didn't need to delete them because there were no ghouls coming back, but you can if you just, you know, for the sake. It, it's less hard to break this than you think, basically. It, 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 it's my little advice here, especially if you're just doing stuff like this. Right, now, so say you've done all this um, what else am I going to delete? I've just deleted the barrels to person, that's it. So you want to save. Just hit save. Now I'm not going to show you because I'd have to log in and I, f I forgot to log in. But if you want to upload it to Bethesda.net, it's literally a case of logging into Bethesda.net, selecting your relevant platform, and it will just say, give it a description, give it a name, tag it, and then you'll go upload and it'll upload, it will just open up your whatever your default browser is. If you haven't logged on, it'll ask you to then log in. And you just have the option to publish it. It's really simple. Um, if you ever want to, whenever, because it'll be linked to your Bethesda account, when you actually log in, you'll actually have a tab. When you scroll through it, it'll say My Mods. You can actually see your creations, so it'll be really easy to find. Or you can just hit Favorite, and that will enable you to find it really, really quickly. If you're going to be... But for whatever, if you just have it as a, as a locally saved file, what you do is you just hit, literally hit save. You don't have to do anything else. You load up the game and then you go to go to mods and then go to load order. And then it's almost always at, right at the bottom. And you'll just see the mod at the bottom right there. And you just hit X, make sure it then to activate it and it will be activated in game. And that is literally all you do. Uh, this is possibly a, a little bit of a longer video because obviously there's lots of chaff to get through. But it is an incredibly easy and straightforward thing to do. As I haven't even told you, this is just about cleaning up, sorting things out. It's, it's such one of those things which is a, you know, it's, it's a complete pain for ages. But suddenly, oh look, Starlight isn't annoying anymore. You know, I can tidy up. Leaves I don't want. Maybe I don't want this bridge. Spoiler, I do, so I'm going to leave it for now. Maybe I don't want these reeds here, or vines, or whatever the fuck that is. And don't forget the stains as well. And that's it. Um, in a future video, I might show you a bit more stuff. I have actually done quite a few videos on the creation kit already. Obviously, they are a little bit more advanced than this, but not too advanced because a lot of it is me just learning as I went. Uh, I won't bother linking the description, but I do have a playlist if you just go to my creation kit video. Just go to my playlist. There's, they're in there. And they're also, I believe, pinned on the, the main channel page of my channel. But yeah, anyway, that's, uh, that's my kind of quite entry-level 
creation kit tutorial. Uh, the next video will actually potentially be a non-Fallout video. I've, I've got a I got given a CD key for a pretty awesome game that I'm late doing footage on because I was painting my Goliaths on the weekend. So I'm going to get on that now. I also have another game actually I want to do as well. So I've got loads of stuff to do. Uh, but I'm also, the, the next mod video, um, the next mod will actually be Starlight Drive-In. And I'll also, I haven't even decided to think on what the next outpost will be. And also sometime this month you'll get in Croup Manor as well. As always, follow me on Twitter at no respawns. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I've just said I've linked it in the comments because I just want to show you guys my my Goliath gang because I'm super chuffed with them. Again, it is quite a scruffy paint scheme, but it works. I went for quite a blanchy style. My Death Watch kill team, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on, which means you won't see them for a bit, though I do have the models all prepared on my desk. Anywho, I'm going to shut up and start editing this. You lot enjoy the rest of your week and I'll talk to you lovely people soon. You take care.